Hello and welcome to this uh, tutorial video about the 12 steps to Navier-Stokes equation. In this case we will regard step 1. Step 1 of the 12 steps to Navier-Stokes is covering a little equation you're seeing here. It is called um, du dt plus c times du dx equals 0. To explain this equation you have to make yourself aware that um, a differentiation can be simplified by saying it's a change in respect to the variable you differentiate with the function with. So in this case the change in time equals a proportion factor time in this case c times uh, the change in space. And this equation can be understood as a wave propagating into a certain direction. Okay, now you have to discretize your equation and for that case you use um, the forward differentiate method and uh, you can read about that in the text. The important equation is below here which says that the next step in time which is uh, indicated by this um, index n plus 1 equals the, um, the value of um, the time you're at right now at the moment minus c times um, a proportion factor times the difference of um, the values regarding uh, the local discretization. We'll see that um, how this works in uh, MATLAB. So I just put in a new file in here and set clear all to just clear all, all values I maybe was using uh, before. And now we have to introduce our space. And we do that with a equation or statement that we have a certain amount of points. In this case we have 41 points. 41 points is um, 41 because of we want to have 40 elements. So this plus 1 is just because of that that we have 40 elements. Now we can do our spacing. The spacing dx equals, um, in this case we have to put in a length we want to discretize with. In this case we will just use 2 and we will divide that with um, the elements. And the elements is, as I said, the number of dots minus 1. So number of dots is 41, the length we want to discretize is 2 and we divided this length by uh, the number of elements to get our spacing between uh, the two, two, between two nodes. Another thing is we want to introduce a discretization in time, so we need a time, um, a number of um, time steps we want to calculate. In this case we will just use um, 100 for example and we will do a time spacing. In this case we will use a constant. Later on we will um, put in a proportion factor between time spacing and local spacing, spacing um, to prevent uh, this, uh, uh, to, to enhance the convergence of, uh, of the equation. So in this case we just use a small time step, for example 0 0.025 and uh, the constant has also to be defined which equals in this case just 1 and I forgot all the semicolons just to good practice put in the semicolons below alright now we have to define our wave first so as we saw here in the equations it can be understood as a wave propagating at into a certain direction with a speed c and this wave has to be defined. Now, uh, as we can see down below, we want to define this sort of wave where we have initially all ones and twos for a, a certain area. So, in this case, we will start with assigning ones into the elements uh, dimension one and the number of dots we have because that's the amount of values we will generate. So this just says we have ones everywhere 
and now we want to assign twos to a certain area and this area is spaced between 0 0.5 and 1 and 0 0.5 and 1 we can specify like follows u of 1 comma 0 0.5 divided by x to 1 divided by the x plus 1 equals 2. Now this says that we can put it into in here u equals 1, 1 comma nx. Now nx it doesn't know so I will <coughs> just put it in here and x equals 41. Now again <coughs> you can see that it has 41 points with 1 and now this equation here yeah the x the x is not known so the x equals in this case 2 divided by um, 40 I just say here this equation again you can see that we have twos in here right so here you have this column vector you want to uh, change the values corresponding to a length of 0 0.5 and then for this case you have to divide the length you want to specify with the number of dots all right Okay, now we have to introduce a placeholder because the thing is we have to later on discretize about the length and about um, the time. So the first thing we want to do, we want to put later on two for loops. So we have this variable n for example, which indexes our time as, in, as put into the equations. So for n equals 1, double dot 1, double dot and t. That means that for uh, the index n counting from 1 till nt, and nt is our maximum time steps, maybe I will just put it here into comments. That's the number of time step. And that is the number of each time what a time step covers. Number of time during one time step. That's, that's our number of dots. And that is our local spacing. And that is the velocity. And here is our wave. You can make that like that. Um, wave definition. And now we have our loops. So the first loop or the outer loop is the time loop. And then you have your inner loop, which is uh, the spacing loop. And there's the index i. And now you have to be careful. Because as you see in here, you will use the variable i minus 1. So if you put in here 1, and counting from 1 to the number of, uh, uh, the number of dots, um, then you have the problem that in the first iteration it will point to the number, uh, to, 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 the, to the value of um, u indexed with i equals 0. And MATLAB doesn't like that. 
So in this case, you have to put in here a two. And you would also have to put in here a an x minus one, if you would ever refer um, the the point to the future. So at the point into the positive direction, because then at the end of one iteration, you would have the nx plus one, right? Okay. Now, in this case, you have to implement your equation in here. So you could say that um, you have to do something like that. U depending on i equals, and now comes the trick, you have to refer to the variables at the time step once before. So you're calculating this n plus one for every i, but have to know what was u from the index n at that time. So you have to make a placeholder as said. So for example, you say just like here, u n equals u. And now you have u n and u um, giving you the same values at the beginning. And then you're calculating u. u will be the, the u n plus one. And then at the next loop, you copy u into u n and do that all over again. So in all those equations here, I have to specify u from n with u n. And u will be u n plus one. Okay, like u n depending on i minus c times dt dx times un depending on i minus un depending on i minus one. This will be the equation. And then we have an end here. And then we would have our a um, our spacing, um, space dependent wave defined. Now I want to visualize that. And for that reason, I will plot, um, I will plot the wave as it is right now um, during each time iteration. For that, I want to plot something and then plot u. And in this case, I want to plot lint space of zero to an x, for example. Come on, you. And then I have to introduce a pause because it iterates this fast that I would not see the plot if I'm doing that without a pause. So for example, I would put in a pause like this and put an end after that. And basically, I'm not done with my equations. So now let's test that. So it did work, but I think you didn't see that. Maybe I will introduce less time step and put a pause to a higher number. So you can see the wave propagating in here. I think maybe a little bit more time steps. Now I can see it. Wait for it. Here it is propagating. Now it's changing its shape, its shape in here. And you can try to analyze that for yourself as a little motivator. And I hope to see you guys next uh, in the next video where we're covering step two of the equations.